Because you're mine, I walk the line. In the development of portfolio theory, in its next extension, uh, we can look at a two assets. Uh, we really don't have to leave the two asset case, as it later turns out. And the weights still add to one. And the return to the portfolio is the weighted average of the returns. And the variance of the portfolio, and here I've given the mnemonic device of when rho is equal to one, that you take the cross products of the standard deviations and uh, the uh, covariance from the definition just replaces the standard deviations and the correlation coefficient. And if we look at a portfolio comprised of two assets, we find that a perfectly positively correlated one creates a straight line segment in terms of portfolio choices. A negatively correlated one, say at minus one, creates uh, the possibility of a zero risk portfolio. And that's something in between, let's say here zero, would uh, bend to the left and then bend back right. Notice they always are either bending to the left or create a straight line in terms of ch portfolio choices. Let's say we pick some random risky securities throughout the world and we put them on a scatter grand in terms of risk and return. And I've highlighted the colored ones on the far right, which we can use as exemplars for further analysis one by one in terms of creating the feasible set. Now, the top right one, the blue one, as it connects to the orange one, uh, maybe has a correlation that's, say, near zero. So it bends a little bit to the left. The next one, connecting down to green, let's say, is perfectly correlated, straight line. The next one, connecting to yellow, bends to the left, let's say, zero. And the yellow one down to blue is perhaps a straight line. And we show mathematically that, indeed, that uh, feasible set here, uh, shaded gray, is smooth, continuous, and bends all the way to the left with the individual securities comprised somewhere therein or on the right. And therefore, we can conclude that the feasible set is smooth and continuous on the left because it always bends smoothly to the left and then bends backwards. But these portfolio choices are in contrast to the preferences an investor might have. Let's say at one unit of consumption, the investor is happy with five units of happiness or utility. And at, say, two units, they might have 6.4 uh, happiness units or smiles. And at three, maybe 7.2 utiles is what the economists call them. And if we put these uh, together as two choices, say X and Y, hamburgers and tofu, I know. And I design this so that it's two different rates. And we relabel these as a professor having a prefer preference for return and a preference for safety now. And noting that safety has an absolute maximum. So we can flip the graph so that the safety is on the left, risk is on the right. And we lay that over the feasible set, we see the person has a preference right there at that red dot, the highest combination of risk and return in, in terms of utility. And if we look at the equations associated with a portfolio comprised of a risk-free and a risky asset, we find the mathematics becomes simpler and yet at the same time more profound. So that leads to a re-examination of the portfolio variance. And again, the portfolio variance is the cross product of the weights. And the covariance here is shown in its constituent parts as the correlation coefficient times the respective standard deviations. And let's let B become F, the risk-free, substituting. And the standard deviation and the variance of the risk-free is 0. So the second term drops out. And the third term as well, we don't have to examine the covariance because the standard deviation of f, the risk-free, is 0, which remains the first term, which because it's all squared, we can directly take the square root in all cases, meaning the portfolio of a risky and risk-free one is now solely a function of the risk and the weight therein, making it proportional and linear. And we connect that to the feasible set 
always linear. We'll choose the highest in terms of return and the least risky to the left in terms of minimizing risk. And because we showed that the feasible set was smooth and continuous, it'll be tangent at the point we'll call the market, and we'll have to assume that. And we again overlay the utility preferences. And that person who uh, was right at that pink red area, we'll give them a little dot there, is going to probably move to the left and or upward. That has been improved by what we call that linear line connecting the risk-free and the market, the capital market line. The person labeled here blue is with a different risk return preference and hence a different set of choices. We'll again leave the feasible set and move up to the capital market line here and probably in this case using margin by buying more than the amount in the market. What is profound about this is that for all investors they will only choose the risk-free and the market. There is no other set of relevant ingredients to the recipe. I'll let me make this silly example. It's like chocolate chip cookies. You might choose different weightings, but you won't change the ingredients. That's Dr. C invests.